Hi, I'm Brian Arcis, the Portfolio Manager on the Ford Global Equity Fund and the Ford International Fund here in Singapore. In the next few minutes, I'd like to chat to you briefly about the long-term performance of the International Fund, as well as the manner in which we manage the portfolio in order to achieve this performance. As a reminder, the Ford International Fund is our flagship multi-asset class absolute return fund, incepted in 1997. We have two objectives in managing the Ford International Fund. First and foremost is to protect investor capital. And second is to deliver returns meaningfully ahead of inflation through an investment cycle. What does that mean in practice? What have we delivered? And in what market environments does the fund perform best? It's all well and good to say that as a conservative multi-asset class product, the International Fund underperforms global equities in strong, rising markets and earns its stripes in down markets. But this wouldn't tell the full story. I'd like to pull up what is likely a familiar graph, which includes the performance of our CPI plus 5% targeted rate of return in light blue, as well as global equities in black since the inception of the fund. Also in this graph, in orange, I've overlaid the performance of the International Fund. There are three points here that I wanted to highlight. First, inflation plus 500 basis points, a 5% real return, is an onerous hurdle. Over this period, even global equities have struggled to consistently deliver a 5% real return. Second, I would highlight that over most of the fund's 24-year history, we have in fact met or exceeded our CPI plus 5% hurdle. You'll see graphically the orange line is either in line with or slightly above the light blue line. I did want to highlight the most recent three years, however, where you may have noticed fund returns had begun to lag the CPI plus 5% target. I want to highlight this period not in order to explain performance below the hurdle. In fact, I believe it performed quite well over the period. But rather in this low interest rate environment, this can be used more as an example of how we manage the fund. As rates have gone from low to lower, taking the U.S. tenure as an example, falling from 3.5% to 40 basis points in less than two years, real returns have become harder and harder to achieve. Our default objective, as I've mentioned, is to always protect investor capital, and we aren't going farther and farther out on the risk curve simply to achieve what we've set as our aspirational benchmark. And this is important to highlight. Third, and lastly, I wanted to highlight how the fund performs in both up and down markets but more importantly, how important downside protection is. If you look all the way to the left-hand side of the graph, you'll see the inception of the fund in the late 90s. The inception of the fund took place right in the midst of the run-up to the tech bubble, which is obviously an interesting time to launch a conservative multi-asset class product. It can be a fantastic time or an unfortunate time, depending on how you look at it. If you look at the first three years from inception to the peak of the tech bubble, despite global equities not being our benchmark, if you look at global equities, they were up 83% over the period, while well, the international fund was up only 20%, so lagging equities by 60% on a cumulative basis over that period. Obviously, you then see with the bursting of the tech bubble, the fund really held its ground, in fact gaining 11% as equities corrected 41% from top to bottom. But the more interesting piece of the story is to look how long it took the global equity market to again catch up to the cumulative returns delivered by the International Fund, demonstrating how important downside protection is to generating long-term inflation-beating returns in a conservative manner. If you look from left to right, you'll see that global equities didn't actually catch up to the International Fund until 2019, a full 17 years later. And that was following an 11-year bull market, which was one of the longest, if not the longest, equity bull markets in history. I hope this has demonstrated not only that we've been able to deliver meaningful long-term real returns for our investors, but have done so in a conservative manner. Since inception, we've achieved inflation-beating returns, returns in line with or in excess of global equities, and have done so with half the volatility and half the drawdown experienced over the same period by equity investors. Thank you for watching.